Baby. The way the aunties got to come together on behalf of young Sebastian Rose Khalifa. Aunties, assemble now. What's up everybody? It's your girl Bonnie Scotch. Thank you so much for clicking on my video today. I wanted to bring you some hot topics. As promised, I know that, you know, I've been talking for a little while about the direction of my channel and for a long time I was trying to stay away from hot topics and um, celebrity culture, but then I thought to myself, you know, the reason why my channel has jumped off in the way that it has is because you all rock with my talking head commentary. So I'm not gonna try to rewrite the wheel. I'm not gonna do anything too complicated. I will, you know, pop in with some tutorials as promised here and there, but I'm just gonna do what comes natural. So I appreciate you all for rocking with me. That being said, before I get into these hot topics, go ahead and hit the like button for me. When you hit the like button, not only is it a free way to support my channel, but it also lets YouTube know that you all are rocking with my commentary. And so YouTube starts to shoot my content out to other viewers just like you, an audience who ordinarily would not get an opportunity to connect with my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, okay? Let's just jump into it, okay? So many of you may know this, all right? But Amber Rose gave a little speech of support at a rally on behalf of Donald Trump, which... It's just so random. It's so random. It's like, I wonder how much the Republican Party is paying their, you know, black influencers to speak on their behalf. Like, what does what the bag look like is what I'm really curious about. Anyway, let me pull up this clip. I want to pull up this Amber Rose clip first so you all can hear a little bit um, of what she was saying. It's racially diverse. propaganda that Donald Trump was a racist. My father said, no, he's not, Amber. What are you talking about? And when I insisted, he said, prove it. So to prove my father wrong, I did my research and looked into all things Donald Trump. People have to do their research. I watched all the rallies. And I started meeting so many of you, his red hat wearing supporters. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to play all of it, everything that she said. I really wanted to comment on that bit where um, she's like, I did my research. And this is something that I heard another Trump supporter say on Mims's channel. Shout out to Make It Make Sense. He did this live the other night um, shortly after, you know, the pow pow happened. And he was asking for Trump supporters to come out and talk about how they felt. Did they feel like it was staged or not? But there was one um, Trump supporter in particular who came up and she was like, you know, follow this lady, follow that lady. You got to do your research. And now I hear Amber saying you got to do your research. And I'm just curious, like. When you went to research whether or not Donald Trump is racist, where did you do your research? And what does research mean to you all? Because I feel like research is being used very loosely. I feel like it's doing a lot of heavy lifting in this scenario. If you're logging onto Facebook and then searching Donald Trump, that's not research. So I, I just would like to know what search engine was Amber Rose in? If you look up Donald Trump, Central Park Five, that will tell you everything you need to know about how he feels about black people. The other thing that is kind of interesting, how are you supporting Donald Trump, but you are the organizer or the creator of the slut walk? I don't really understand. Those things don't really go together. 
He has multiple essay allegations. Am, am I bugging here? Anyway, shout out to my new nails. Um, I don't really do plain colors that often. But this was like one of those colors that I didn't have. And it's just like that. That really poppy blue. Anyway. So it's ironic that they were able to um, recruit this young woman who, you know, and we're, she's a, you know, she's a racially ambiguous. I don't want to say she's black because she has said she's not. So I don't want to say this black woman, this woman who is of whatever race that she has claimed. She said she's not black. But they brought somebody whose whole career is based in black culture. She would, used to be on a show on BET. That's the reason most people know who she is. She dated one of the most prominent African-American rappers in the business, in the history of hip hop. You know, so her whole culture came from black culture, even though she says she's not a black person herself. And the fact that she is now the person they're using to try to recruit young people of color and to say that this is the person who is the endorser of Donald Trump, who you should trust. When she won't even claim the culture that brought her to the table, I'm dubious that this will work. I don't know anyone who takes their political cues from Amber Rose. But just in case you do, you might want to duplicate doing your own research because she might not have done it thoroughly. I think when we look at... Joy has spoken. Joy Reid has spoken. My entire family... Um, and so Amber Rose had a response to Joy... And listen, everything that Joy said is true. You know what I'm saying? It's like you want to profit off of black culture, but you want to distance yourself from your blackness as much as possible. I mean, it's a tale as old as time, song as old as rhyme, you know? So Amber responded to Joy Ann Reed on Twitter. She said, hi, at Joy Ann Reed. I never said I wasn't black. I said I identify as biracial. I'm not going to invalidate my white father to make you feel more comfortable. Stop being a race baiter. Your president does enough race baiting for all of us. Race baiter? Only white people use that term. So that's very interesting. Hey, here is a clip from an interview from February 2015. Um, it's with Amber Rose and Peter Rosenberg. Here is what she said some years ago. This is what Joy was referring to when she said that you said you're not a black woman. Black. Do you, do you think like a mixed race person, right? Right. However, I think culturally in America, you're considered black. Do, do you think is that? Do you think that's how people perceive you, and is that how you perceive yourself? I do not consider myself a black woman. Absolutely not. What do you consider yourself? Biracial. Black. Okay, <clears throat> she doesn't consider herself a black woman. She considers herself biracial. That's what she said out her own mouth. And now she's walking it back. So here's my thing about that whole thing um, with biracial and who they claim, what they want to claim and all of that. I don't really care how biracial people choose to identify, right? If you want to be claimed, black people will claim you. Like me, for example, Mariah Carey is always with the black people. She's always with her people. We claim her. Halle Berry is always with her people. We claim her. It's certain individuals that are biracial that we just, we think of them as black, right? <clears throat> the interesting thing to me, though, about biracial people, I used to be friends with a woman. She was much older than me at the time. Um, I was like in my early 20s. She was in her late 30s at the time. But anyway, um, she had three biracial kids. And I remember this might have been just maybe like a few years ago, maybe within the last five years. I don't speak to her anymore. But we were having a conversation and she was saying how, you know, my kid identifies as biracial. And mind you, she's the white woman. She's Irish. The dad is black and she's like, he doesn't want to denounce his Irish family and blah, blah, blah. And the thing that really got me is like, your, your biracial son wants so badly to identify with his Irish side and you yourself had said that people in your family have been racist to him. 
that's the thing that I don't really get is like, why are you so pressed to be accepted in a space that you are so clearly not welcome or wanted? Black people, like you could just get in where you fit in, biracial, light skin, fair skin, dark skin, whatever. Like, I don't know. It's just always interesting when biracial people jump up to be like, oh, I'm not black, I'm biracial. I don't know. It just seems pressed, but Joy was not wrong in anything that she said. And even Jocelyn Hernandez has called out Amber Rose on this on College Hill. She's like, you don't want to be a black woman. You want to, you you know, you're confused about your identity. You want to be up under white people, but you want to profit off of black culture. We already know the story, child. <sighs> anyway. Well, because it's related, let's just talk about this. So according to the Neighborhood Talk, Wiz Khalifa charged with illegal drug possession in Romania. Baby. During a performance at a music festival held in the resort of Constanesti, the accused was found to have possessed more than 18 grams of cannabis and to have consumed on stage another quantity in the form of a handmade cigarette. Romanian prosecutor said in a statement on Sunday. Wiz was taken in to be charged, but wasn't kept in custody. <sighs> Child. You know, here's the thing about Wiz Khalifa and Amber Rose. I always liked them together, and I always liked them as co-parents for Sebastian because it just seemed like they got along great. They were really mature and really evolved in the way that they handled their co-parenting. I was here for it, right? And so now to see this and to see the comments that Amber has had um, and her her being a Trump supporter, Sebastian needs a village. He needs community. He needs prayer. He needs to be lifted up in prayer. So um, I'm not even kidding. I do really feel like we need to put Sebastian Rose Khalifa on our prayer list collectively, like seriously, for real. Um, I just feel like this. It's just not that serious to me to have to smoke all the time. Like, if you go into a country that you know that that's not allowed, know that you are going to have to rock with it for like, or without it rather, for a day or two. It's not that deep. Like you can't live what you're probably only going to be there for like a day because you're doing shows. So you're like jumping from city to city. Or why not just do cities that you know you can smoke at? I don't know. Like for me, like I... I'm not that brave. Like I'm too scared to like go overseas and do some stuff. Like I would be researching all their customs, all their taboos. Hello, because have y'all ever seen that movie, A Broke Down Palace with Claire Danes? Baby, that movie traumatized me as like, um, how old was I when I came out? I was, I feel like I was definitely in junior high school when that came out. And I feel like I remember watching it in high school and being like devastated. Okay, watch A Broke Down Palace. If you have seen that, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Anyway, child, what else do we have here? This one, okay, does not shock me at all. This is from The Shade Room, all right? So, Irv Gotti, accused of SA and abuse in new lawsuit. In a new lawsuit, Irv Gotti is being accused of S.E. actually assaulting and abusing a woman on multiple occasions from 2020 to 2022. According to documents obtained by Miami W. Times, the Jane Doe is alleging that after meeting Gotti through a mutual friend in 2020, he invited her on a vacation to St. Martin. Documents state that once they arrived, Gotti allegedly coerced her into having S.E. actual intercourse with him, threatening to send her home if she didn't comply. After that trip, the two allegedly started dating, and the lawsuit claims Jane Doe suffered constant abuse in the relationship, including an incident in which Gotti allegedly forced her to give him oral S.E.X. on an elevator. As a result of this S.E. actually 
abusive relationship, a plaintiff has suffered severe emotional and psychological harm for which she had to be committed to a psychiatric ward. These injuries continue and affect the plaintiff to this day, the documents state. It is unclear what sort of damages the plaintiff is seeking at this time. Are any of us surprised? Are any of us shocked? I know we keep talking about this, about the reckoning that hip hop is going to have, especially as it concerns the Me Too movement. I feel like men in power have gotten away with too much for entirely too long. And I feel like the more people come out and get brave, the more it galvanizes others to do so. So I love it. I love the bravery. I love to see people telling their stories and um, telling their truths. It's never too late to tell your truth. I never want a victim of essay to feel like Oh, it happened 10 years ago. It happened 20 years ago. If it's still on your mind, if it's still affecting you, there should be no reason that you can't talk about it. Also, am I making this up or am I right in remembering that Irv Gotti was messing around with an underage Ashanti while he was married? Allegedly, allegedly. Am I making that up? He's a terrible, awful, like disgusting human being. And the way he talked about Ashanti, like, oh, I made her. Very delusional, very nasty, very ugly man. All right, y'all. So that was it for me in the hot topics tonight. Go ahead and hit the like button on your way out. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and drop down in the comments with me. You know, I want to hear from y'all. Peace.